that's a poll that I think everyone can get behind. Yeah, folks, I'm with Gina Grad here. We just started the uh, the video, and um, we were just talking about Amy Lou Harris, Mark Knopfler. Gina, folks, if you want to know that, you can go back and listen to the beginning of the show. Gina had no idea who Little Feet was. No. And um, she's going to take a deep dive on that band. And you're going to sit there the entire time going, how did I make it so far in life and not know this? Yeah. Are they out of the bayou or something? They're from the South. You see, okay. I know more about Barry White than I know about Little Feet. <laughs> no, it's but... impressive. And the fact that you know who Little Feet is is, you know, is good enough for are now. Are you familiar with Fish Head Funk and all of that? The Rads, the Radiators, and, nope. uh, you know, the well, you know the Neville brothers. Of course. Neville's, you know. Yeah, Aaron the, Neville. Aaron Neville on his own, the Neville brothers together. Yellow Moon. Uh, you've never heard Yellow Moon by the mm -mm. Neville brothers? We will end this show with <laughs> Yellow Moon by the Neville Brothers. Is is Aaron Neville the look at this face? Yeah, he, he, he yeah, and the, the father was in the band, and oh, also, you know, and if you knew the Neville story, I mean, they grew up very poor in New Orleans, Ninth Ward poor, um, and um, you know, some some of the kids, you know. They had to be put in foster homes because you know they they, they were that poor. Oh, there there's a story. Um, I want to say Charmaine Neville, who angelic voice, angelic. She was um, she was in class one day, and they were calling out roll the first day of school, and they said, you know, Charmaine Neville and blah blah blah, and, and this other girl hears the name and she goes, oh my god. That's my sister. We haven't seen each other since, we were, you know, and, and there was this incredible little tearful reunion of these two kids who hadn't seen each other in years because of the foster system. I, I just rem wow. I remember that story because Charmaine told me that story. Um, I was having a scotch. She was having a joint. And <laughs> um, she was telling me that story one night down in New Orleans. We, we were down at uh, Snug Harbor. Of she course, was she was telling you face to face, and this isn't something you read. Yeah, she had somewhere. just come off stage. I, I, I love that girl. Oh uh, but yeah, God. the Nevels are something else. Um, wow, just, just just something else. Wow. And then they became, you know, the Neville brothers became a big deal. And um, uh, yeah, I just I just think of Aaron Neville and Linda Ronstadt duet. Yeah, that that's right. They they had big hits together. Yeah. Um, you know, so it, you know, look, it it goes on and on and on. I promise you guys. At the end of the show, we will play Yellow Moon by the Neville Brothers. Uh, that's another deep dive you could take, Gina. That sounds good with a dimmed light and a glass of scotch to do a oh, Neville yeah. Brothers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And look, they, they get deep. And they used to play the quad at Tulane when I was in school. They, you know, it's like you would sit there and go, I can't believe the, after, the Friday afternoon quad. The Nevilles are up there. And then Alan Toussaint would come on and do a couple of hits. And you're sitting there looking at like MCA recording student, you know, just, you know. Yeah, we didn't have much of that. A bunch of Jews and one Italian, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the most amazing thing. That is yeah. so cool. And I would sit there and I would go, you guys realize what's going on here? You guys? Yeah. Oh, man. That's so cool. Yeah, go to Tipitina's on the weekend, Wild Chop. Oh my God. God now, I miss those days. I'm gonna need you to stay in that mind frame. The yeah. happy, happy, oh boy. carefree, happy Come go on, lucky. Can, can we just skip it? <laughs> just Benny, skip it. I'm sorry. Uh, you know I'm a people pleaser and I'm afraid for anyone to be mad at me. That being said, I'm willing to risk it because this is really important because this is holiday themed. So it's very, very important. All right. So here's the deal. I'm not unhappy about this because my thing is I have a sweet tooth. Right. right? I, oh, I make, good. I make no qualms about it. I'm a sugarholic. So I have my espresso. I made a big thing of espresso here. Yep. I see I got, it. I got a ton of water here. So once yep. I take a couple of bites of this, I, I'm going to have some of the stuff to, to get it, to just wash it out of my brain. Um, <laughs> folks, it's the uh, Cadbury egg. Um, I'm sure I've had one of these before. I just don't remember. Um, go on, Junior. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you a little something about the Cadbury egg. Okay. Now, grow growing up Jewish, you know, we didn't have Easter. I didn't know what an Easter basket was. I didn't have any thoughts about the Easter bunny. But um, 
we got an Easter, we got a Cadbury egg every Easter when they were on the shelves. We would beg for each, just which one. We would beg for a Cadbury egg. Up until I was in college, and I can tell you for a fact they don't mail well, my mom would literally, as a kind of a joke, put one in an envelope and send them to me. She's even done it when I've lived in L.A. We, every year we get one Cadbury egg. Now, I can't enjoy them anymore because they're just too sweet. But I figured Vinny loves eggs. Vinny's going to love this egg. Now, I just realized something. I have a major correction to make, and I'm really mm. embarrassed. Right. And by the way, I have egg on my face um in our i know our last, <laughs> in our last episode we wrong did one. the rolls the wrong one <laughs> wrong one wrong one there we go <laughs> thank you in our last episode we talked pizza rolls last week i was a little famished as my people say and i got something wrong I want to apologize and correct, and we can even slip it into the other show if you want. Um, the total uh, carbs for that is 30 grams of carbs, not 24, 30, but, wow. but significantly less sugar, but higher carbs. So I, I apologize. I was toggling between two things. So this is supposed to look like an egg. It's a chocolate shell, and inside is basically just fondant. It's just fondant ice cream, uh, fondant icing, white for the egg white and yellow for the yolk. I would oh, love so you to open it. There's a yolk in here. Too. Yeah, there's a yolk. You'll All see right. it. So I'm going to use the same plate because I threw those tortina pizza rolls in the fireplace a little while ago. <laughs> in the um, fireplace, like a like a Viking funeral. Yeah. Um, okay. So Gina, um, I, I was told. Um, I want to say um, one of the people who. Uh, work for me over here. Um, I think it was Lois. Mm -hmm. uh, I was telling her I would be eating this. And um, she said, your teeth are going to hurt. Yeah. Is it because yeah. I, I love sugar. Now, we're about it, to put that to the test. It looks pretty innocuous here. Yeah, just a shell, a chocolate egg shell. So is you, you, the whole thing is just icing on it. Is it going to gush out like... Um, it's pretty I, solid, but I don't know how you're going to open it. Do you have like a knife or you want to just crack it open with your teeth? Um, well, let me cut it open and see. Okay, because I really um, don't want you to miss the yolk. Well, here's the deal. Um, <laughs> I've had like, like if you go to like Mrs. C's and you get like the um, the cherry thing and if you try to bite into it. Yeah, it, it gushes. gushes. Yes. Right? All right, let me just cut it. Hang on. All right, he's going to go get a knife. Now, the thing that Vinny doesn't know, well, actually, Vinny does know because he's with a very classy, sophisticated Brit, that the candy, as I understand, and as Vinny's told us before, is significantly higher quality in the UK and in Europe. Yeah, Cadbury this, is a thing in the UK. Right. This is very much CadburyUS.com. So... Something tells me it's full of more, I don't know, corn syrup, sweeteners, but it is icing. It's all icing on the inside. And we waited all year for these to come out. So he looks like he's doing a little surgery. What do you see? Okay, I used my um, <laughs> rusty case pocket knife that happened to be my dad. Oh, God, you're going to have to and, throw that away. And as Gina said, it, yeah, on the inside, yep, is mostly... Um, white but it's there's some there's some yellow in there too yeah so you yeah they it out with your tongue look like an egg so yeah this is a smaller piece so may i make a suggestion yes go on <laughs> you got to do it the way we did it you got to do it the way all kids do it the very first thing i would suggest is take it and lick it from the inside lick just get some icing because that's all we wanted anyway and then try the chocolate Okay, I'm gonna just put some of my knife here. Okay, I don't know if we've ever really eaten them together. It's like you separate an Oreo, you gotta lick the filling out, and then you eat the chocolate. So you can see it's, it's, it's yeah, drippy, gooey egg yolk. I feel like, like I'm bukkakeing <laughs> Easter candy here. You are. Here he goes. The yolk is in his mouth, and he loves sugar. very very sweet it just tastes like pure sugar it's like if i had put um if i had put 
if I just taken a, a scoop of sugar, that's what that tastes like to me. It's like a sugar paste. Would that be a correct way to say it? Yeah, but it's now leaving kind of a weird sugar. Not, Don't say coating again. Not coating, but there's a weird aftertaste going on. Oh, really? Yeah, as as it's going down the back of my throat now, there's a weird. So unlike really good chocolate, like if I if it, look, if I'm going to have chocolate, if I'm going to have that moment, mm -hmm. it's going to be a high quality. I'm going to be somewhere in Europe where they yeah. make really good stuff. You're going to be in Switzerland, Switzerland, Germany, somewhere like that. Um, you know, even Norway, you know, mm. the, the, what I just put in my mouth, the, the inside, I, folks, I haven't had the chocolate yet. It, that was just unbelievably bad. <laughs> um, it started off like really, 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 really sweet. Yes. But now it's gone into a dull kind of thing. There's no way I'm going to get this knife clean. Now, no, you're going to have to throw it away. Now, the chocolate shell. Hey, who doesn't love chocolate? And nothing's going to be as sweet as what you just experienced. So it can't be that bad. So here I, he goes. I'm just going to eat this whole piece. Oh, yeah. Look at this guy. It's the smaller of the two pieces. All right. It's got I wanna, some chocolate. I want to get the experience. It's got some frosting. Down yeah. the hatch. He just put the whole thing in his mouth. Unbelievable. This That's is the whole thing, yeah. No, the whole no, piece. Like left. <laughs> the whole piece. I thought you were going to take the daintiest of nibbles. Now he he has the top like the cap in his mouth with a little bit of yolk, quote unquote. He's doing a lot of like, like there's a lot a lot of mouth movement like around like he's kind of trying to like scrape it out of his mouth. <laughs> and okay, again, I all right. I hate yeah, I hate when I do this because it makes me feel like I'm being Gwyneth Paltrow. I'm not the gooper, folks. I'm not. Yeah, we I'm know. Not. We know. Hang on, Gina. <laughs> what is he doing? Bit. Okay, I'm vamping because I don't know what's in that thermos that he just put to his mouth, but it's either Why? probably, I was going to say, poison for the sweet embrace of death or some scotch, but he had to. No, it's water, water and ultra salt. Um, and this, my, the taste is still in my mouth. Thoughts? That's the worst chocolate I've ever eaten in my entire life. <laughs> it's listen. I'm not being. I'm not being that guy. Uh, when I was a kid, I would like you know they would have the Reese's egg. Oh sure, that was my go-to egg. You know, so yeah. if I tried anything, it was the Reese's egg. I would hate to think the chocolate has been bastardized. That, that does not taste like, that's the first cheap chocolate I've had in so long I can't remember when. Well, remember, you well, you've already clearly blocked out having to have half of a bite of Twix, which you did not like. Yeah, the Twix was actually better than that. <gasps> Wow, and you did not care for the Twix. No, the, the chocolate tasted better on the Twix. It, that tasted, it, it's it's still weird to me. I got. Is it kind of waxy? It's waxy. It's not chocolatey. It's it's not. Look, I'm no prude. Well, maybe I'm a prude. If I was going to have chocolate in L.A., it was like one or two pieces that they would make at Mrs. C's. Yes. And, you know, they would have like a truffled something in the middle, mm -hmm. this kind of thing. And once a year, you know, Serena would bring it around, you know, New Year's time or whatever. Sure. And I would have a couple of pieces because I'm a sugarholic. So I literally keep it to zero per year, just kind of whenever. Right. But when I eat chocolate, I want it to be good chocolate. You want it to I be an experience. I remember. Okay. Somewhere few years ago and I had like a Hershey's bar. Yeah. Oh. I tasted it. I couldn't finish it. Yeah. Those that are reminds it. me of the Hershey's bar. You know, let me ask you this. It, Cause you said Hershey's bar and this is what I equate it with. Same thing with Hershey's kisses. And I haven't had a Cadbury egg in so long. I don't remember this kind of candy, this chocolate and stuff is so the only way I can describe it is it's so sweet. It turns sour. 
I don't know how else to explain it. Like it, it's so sweet. It passes sweet and goes to like sour or bitter or something I can't put my finger on. That candy is reminding me of a book I read called Salt, Sugar, Fat, where they talk about how they they make foods chemically so that you want to just keep eating them. Mm -hmm. the first bite of that, like when I put that, just the nougat part in my mouth, mm -hmm. the, the, the inside, the first thing was, man, this is really sweet. Mm, this is really good. As soon as it dissipated on my tongue, it went to a very bland kind of sour taste to where it almost made me want to eat another piece. So that's what I thought you were going to say. By the time I ate the, that top, mm -hmm. it had more of that cream in it and the whole thing. Initially, when I put it in my mouth, first off, it gums up in your mouth, not like regular chocolate. It just gummed up in a yes. weird way. That you were yeah. moving your face in a way that was strange, like you were yeah. trying to scrape it out of your mouth. Yeah, it was just all caught in my teeth and in my tongue and everything. So I was able to swish it out with some water and salt. Um, but now I have this terrible taste on my tongue. Like I want to go gargle. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's when you would go, oh, let me get that hit again. Right. Yeah. And it, you know, it's so interesting. It makes you want to get that hit again. Because you don't want to feel, you know, like drugs, you don't want to feel the way you feel without it. So you need a little more just to keep the uh, keep it going. Yeah. Like I said, going in my mouth, it was like, mm, really sweet, really good. You know, my brain lit up and then it just went right to uh, I'm not enjoying this. Now wow. it's sitting right there and it's I have this horrible kind of. Again, it's not the, the thing that you get from the Totinos or the uh, right. Pop Tart. This is just a sour taste in my mouth. Yes, now. that's what I'm talking about. Yes, absolutely. So now he's going for his very, very bitter quintuple espresso. Yeah. Swishing that around in his mouth. Yeah. yeah it's, so uh, that that is uh, the treat that shall stay on the shelves for at least another month through the holiday Easter holiday season. Yeah, and I'm sure it'll be around long after that. They, they won't just they're going to sell it probably at half price or whatever. So folks. Yeah. If you're going to do something, go get something good. Don't do not do this. <laughs> this is not good. Gina's mom. We begged. We Gina's begged. A, Gina's an extra mom, but she had no mother. <laughs> oh, no, please. Yeah. She's going to kill you. <laughs> she had no mommy. This uh, was this was every once. Well, this was once a year. And, you know, this is when we weren't getting the uh, Olestra potato chips. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You have them. <laughs> Did you just craft your way through childhood? Uh, yes. When when something on something you're about to eat says may cause anal leakage, think twice. <laughs> uh, I don't even think we can. I've never had a lustre, but I, 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 had a I, I mean, we used to have them just like regular giant bags of potato chips. So I'm I'm quite sure I was not well. Did you cry? Did, did you find your stomach was always a wreck or upset or something? Or I don't just, remember, but I. I grew up with quote unquote mysterious stomach problems. So yeah. between the grains and the Olestra and the snack wells and no one could figure it out. It was a mystery. I just had tons of stomach problems. Wow. Yeah. And now you don't. No, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how that works. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I'm sorry that I had to do that to you that this, again, it was holiday. No, no, this is how we learn folks. This is how we learn. And, and guys, I'm not technically, I'm not trying to mess with him. Like I genuinely in my own stupidity thought he might enjoy a pop tart. I was wrong. So we'll get him on something where he's like, I get it. The pop tart was beyond, beyond something. <laughs> you know, it's like out of everything. Well, that and the noodles, um, Oh, the, the macro, the craft macaroni and cheese. That had zero taste to it. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna keep digging, but and then I thought, hey, who doesn't he like spicy? Maybe he'll like a hot Cheeto. No, it just tasted like chemical spice. Yeah, th that wasn't like a Cheeto. Th that wasn't yeah. cheesy with spice on it. It was just, it to my taste buds, it was a chemical. Well, I'm going to keep digging, but before we get out of here, can I ask your opinion on something sure. that I'm very curious about? Because you always surprise me. I Sometimes I think you're going to zig and you zag. And there was a woman online. I don't have it in front of me, but it came up on my, you know, when I was scrolling through TikTok and she's a food coach. You don't look well. Are you okay? <laughs> Are you okay? I'm genuinely worried. 
he's not well, you guys. I'm just going to power through this quickly. Well, my so, neck, my neck earlier, and then I did an hour on on the spinner. This inflammation I just gave you is not going to help. And then I, I did a half an hour on my paddle erg. Oh, and boy. I dropped off another cord of wood here, so I had to stack all the wood. Of course you did. Okay. Yeah, so I, I just I, did three hours of... I get it. You well, let's to... see, an hour and a half, three. It took me two and a half hours to do it. I just did five hours of... <laughs> You're allowed to have some neck stiffness. Yeah. So this woman's like a nutritionist or a health coach or whatever, and she has this idea... And the people in the comment sections were really divided on if they thought this was brilliant and a great, you know, diet hack, or if this was like, this is how you get an eating disorder. And I really don't know what you're going to say. So basically her thing was, if you're hungry, um, then sometimes, you know, you're not really hungry and you're, it's the stress response and you, you know, however she explained it. So instead of eating, when you're hungry, get a bowl, fill it with really cold ice water and stick your face in it and, you know, do it for a few seconds, whatever, and come up and then do it again. And basically you won't be hungry anymore because you're, I don't know, getting your cortisol flowing or your nor your epinephrine, I don't know, endorphins. But when you're hungry and it's, it's not time to eat, or you don't think you should eat, stick your head in an ice cold bowl of water. That's stupid, Gina. Okay. <laughs> um, so my my nephew, Steele. Wow. Steele Totterich. That's his real name. Wow. And um, so is he an exotic dancer and adult actor or one or the other? No, but he's a good looking guy. And I bet. Steel. So I'm, I'm like sitting there going, how did you get that name? Why couldn't they think of that for me? They were still <laughs> handing out Italian names when I was a kid. And he gets the name Steele. That's pretty awesome. What the fuck? Is... So Steele is always sending stuff to me and my buddy, um, Don Coddington, hang on. Uh oh. It's the billionaire, Don Coddington's Friday, five o'clock. Have a good weekend. All right, sorry about that. You gotta do what you gotta do. I get it. So um, at, at any rate, um, Steele is always writing to us and it's always, you know, he's, he's in his early thirties. There's always some hack sure. and he works out a lot. He's at the gym. He's one of those guys that can throw up three fifteen, you know, half dozen times. Excuse me. Bench, that kind of thing. So he sends us this one guy and let me see if I can read it here. Biohacking is what guys call it. Yeah. So he goes, th this thing, I won't even give the guy's name, how to be healthier than 99% of the world. Oh, I'm listening. Number and there's six things here. Pump iron, hydrate with H two O. See, so, you have to make it sound scientific. Right, water. That Got means it. as you fucking drink some water. Yeah, doing that right now. Okay. Fuel up with whole food. Mm -hmm. Okay. Snooze for eight hours. I think he means sleep. Yeah. Ditch the booze. That means don't drink. Okay. And walk eight to ten thousand steps a, uh, a day. Sure. And my buddy Don, I won't say his last name, so I don't have to play the, the thing. Sounder. Don says, oh, you mean what Uncle Vinny's been telling you for a gazillion years? Mm -hmm. And I wrote back and I went, yes, I should have said those six things to him and then put in front of it, these are hacks. Yeah. You want to biohack your body, dude? Hey, hey boo, you want to stick your fucking face in water? How dumb can you be? How stupid. I, but, you know, I, I'm not insulting your intelligence when I say I didn't know which way you'd go, because I know that something that they found to be scientifically valid is cold plunges. And I know that you're very impressed by those, as we all are. Yeah, so yeah. I thought maybe there was a connection there or maybe this is just ridiculous. No, it, look, if you're you know, here's the thing. If you feel hunger pangs, there's a difference between really being hungry and hunger pangs, which can happen because of. um um, just a hormone shift, you know, if your body is releasing or if you if your body is not releasing enough or too much. Um, um, ghrelin. Uh, ghrelin, thank you. Uh-huh. Um, you you will start to get hunger pangs. You could be full, right? Yeah. But if that switch, if you're if that switch is in the wrong direction, you can feel empty. Just drink some water and it'll go away. That's I always tell myself if I'm 
if I'm if I know I'm not really hungry and I feel hungry, I either say you're not hungry or bored or you're not hungry, you're thirsty. And then I drink water. And if I'm still hungry, I eat. But if it usually it usually cures what ails me. Um, whenever you get a chance, I want you to look up my girlfriend here. Um, Ann Apple on Instagram. Ann Apple? Apple, H-A-P-P-E-L. Oh. Okay. Um, love this girl. Love this girl. She's been on the show. Uh, she She's a fan of what we do here. Um, she she takes she lives out in the middle of, of like this really cold area. She just oh. takes cold plunges all winter. Yeah, she's a badass. Yeah, that woman. She's like my age, by the way. That body belongs to a woman that's my age. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. And she, I mean, she stays in great shape. Her husband's in great shape. Um, I've talked to him a couple of times. Super nice people. And she just you'll see if you go back and watch some of her videos. She's in a bikini crawling over ice and breaking the ice to get into the water. I've seen it. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, this is a woman. And by the way, she doesn't just go jump in and get out. She jumps in. She dives down and say, like, oh, shit, I think Ann just died. <laughs> and then she pops up and, oh, my God, she's alive. Thank God she's alive. And oh. the way she told me on the podcast, the way she figured it out was she, um, she was walking along the shore one day and she's got these little frou-frou dogs that runs on batteries, like a little, pipe right. in little the yappy. Yeah. I don't know which one it is, but one of the little yippee, yippee, dogs yep. and the dog fell in <gasps> uh, or maybe she was canoeing and uh -huh. it was like springtime, but it was still like, you know, the, you got to go like 40 something degrees. You got to go but after it. I can't remember how the dog ended up in the water, but she, you know, being a mommy, you know, she mm -hmm. just fuck it. That's my baby. I got to go get it. Yep. And um, and then, you know, she got back in the boat and saved the dog. And and then she felt like the, this rush of energy for the rest of the day. And she went, man, I felt good. <laughs> so she started doing it. Wow. And yeah, and that's and that's that means she's an extra badass, like, a you know, a fireman running into a fire because people who go through experiences like that, normal people like us would go, that was the scariest thing. Now, whenever I see water, I'm scared of it. Now I'm, I'll never do that again. She was the opposite. Yeah. And so that's a whole different thing where you're shocking your body. The, the, the jury's out on how well that stuff works. Um, I've seen some pretty interesting stuff. You know, I've I've had um, on the show three or four times um, uh, the guy who actually found kind of went out and found Wim Hof. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's written some really good books uh, and his name uh, is escaping me right now. Um, uh, he, he talks about breathing. He's, he, Corolla's had him on a couple of times. Yeah. And it, I mean, Wim Hof is now, it was, that's, that's the name when you think of cold yeah. plunges and cold, that's when and, and, oh God, well, what's the guy's name? He, he was doing that, That's why I have this breathing thing right here on my desk. Yeah. You, know, you put this oh. in your mouth and this breathing device. Um, oh God, why? Yeah. Please find his name. Um, he, he's written books on breathing and tons of books. He's a well-known author. Um, just all the way around. Gina's looking it up, folks. And, and I know you're all yelling at me. It's like, how can you not remember his name? Because I, he's been on the show maybe three or four times now. Um, Hold on. Uh, look up. Is it, uh, well, that's the Wim Hof Method, but who's it by? Uh, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up the book Breathe. Oh. Well, there you go. One second. Breathe book. James Nestor. James Nestor. Thank you. Uh-huh. Um, James Nestor, you know, talks a lot about this kind of stuff and how if you ever want to really do deep dives on breathing and, and really get into your health. And because, you know, that was a thing two years ago when I was in England, um, not this Christmas, but last Christmas, all of a sudden my emails kept getting bombarded with this thing you put in your mouth like this, you know, uh -huh. but it was like, but it was like a $200 device and it hooked to your Bluetooth on your phone and the whole thing. And, you know, it's like, Hey, it can increase your lung capacity by X percent. And I'm like, that seems, you know, that that's a little Dubious. fantastical, you yeah. know, I've been around for a long time. You, you can't, you know, so I, I, I said, you know, what? I, I got on, on, I didn't get on the phone. I was in England. I, I wrote to James and I said, Hey, 
I need you to come back on to talk about these devices. Not mm -hmm. this particular, th this is a $20 version off of Amazon or maybe $15. It kind of looks like a, like a little bit of a mouth guard with like um, a sippy cup like top on it. Yeah. And you see this part back here, you can close it down or open it up. I see. And basically what you're doing is you put in, are you, I'm going to demonstrate it. Yeah, so he'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what's going on. on. Right. So, yeah, it looks kind of like a mouth guard. He just put it in. It, it wears like a mouth guard and he's breathing. He's sort of working overtime to inhale and he's still inhaling. Now he's exhaling very hard. He looks like he's really working. Right. So you you blow, you blow suck in. This causes you to really open your lungs up all the way. You're hitting all of your VLI. You have to work to get your diaphragm frame to suck right. even more. And over the course of weeks of playing with this thing, and when you blow out, of course, you're you're contracting in the opposite. It strengthens your lungs, and I, it really works. I'm very interested you know, in that. James, I get winded easily for no reason. Would this help me? Yeah, it, it'll help. I, I walk it, like four it, miles a day, and I still get winded. Well, because you're not getting out of your comfort zone. You see, um, that's a whole different conversation. You want to get into your zone two right. and walking is not getting you in zone two. Now walking is very healthy. You know, you're burning, you, you, you know, your body's utilizing fat because zone one, you're utilizing fat, just like in zone two, but for your age, um, what's your actual age, Deanna, if you don't want really, can you type it, just send it to me on this thing. Yeah, hold on. Um, um no, because then you're going to do the math. And then you're tell everybody all right, let's what. pretend. Let's pretend you're 30 years old. Let me do. Yes, uh, perfect. All right, so, if Gina was 30, you take the number 180. Hold on, I'm going to my calculator to do the real score. All okay. Right. 180. Yeah. Minus mm -hmm. your age. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do 30 for the audience. Okay. That gives you 150. Mm -hmm. But you're not a couch potato. You walk around and you you move around, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to add five clicks. So whatever that okay. number was. So for add the five. audience, we took 180 minus 30. That's 150. And we're going to add five clicks if, you, if you're not a couch potato. If you are a couch potato, I want you to subtract five points. And that will put you right at around 75% of your aerobic capacity. Okay. Zone two is between 70 and 79%. So... This is an average that would put you right in the middle. Now, folks, if you're a long time marathoner, you know, triathlete, a guy like me that does all this crazy stuff, it could be much higher, right? We we fall outside of, of this norm. Right. Right. And the only way we can figure it out is by doing a stress test, see exactly where our peak is, and then take 75% of that. But for the rest of us, this is a pretty easy way to find it's, it. It's, I just saved, whoever does this, I just saved you about $300 worth of <laughs> going to a clinic where they will measure you. Okay, so that's where my, and when that number is supposed to be my heart rate, for the, how long? The more the merrier. Okay. The Good to know. So, uh, do you wear a, a, a chest strap? No, I have my little Fitbit. Okay, and that, that shows... Yes. Heart rate. Yes. You want that number. So you want it to be plus or minus that number by about five beats. So okay. Um, you don't want to go much above that number, but if you're five to seven, eight beats below that number, you're fine. Okay. You're fine. And, and that's that's all you need to do. And it's interesting because I know I I mean we can get into this on another show, but everyone's like, no, it's all about zone three, because then you're pushing it. And you've always said that is not true. The problem with zone three. It goes back to your mom. <laughs> Do now, tell. Oh, you burn more calories in zone three. But you're also burning not just fat, because now you're moving too fast to use your fat, but you're using blood glycogen. And so now you're going to start burning through some of your glycogen, and you, your body will have to take that back on Got in it. the form of a Cadbury egg. I see. You see how that works? I, very The circle of life. Yeah. So, um, as a matter of fact, we're supposed to have Dr. Tim Noakes on the show coming up probably next month, where he's finally done a study. There's not many people who do the full flight studies, but uh, Timmy has a lot of money over in South Africa, and um, he doesn't, but, you know, he's got a foundation, 
and he's an MD and a professor, and he's been doing this stuff for years. He's been a very close friend for all those years. And I respect the man highly. And he now did a study where they had people in zone three and zone four who have been <clears throat> like me, you know, just living off of fat and protein for a lot of years. And they were able to now perform as high as the, the people on sugar, you know, using sugar. So. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But for the rest of us, zone two will do just fine. Uh, look, I, I did all my training in zone two for all of my races and people go, when you get to those 12 mile climbs and you're going from, you know, the desert floor up to 6,000 feet and 12 miles, how in the hell were you able to, it's like, because I would have some of the fastest time going up town pass and some of those things. Once you build that aerobic energy, your body knows how to get there, man. It's incredible. You know? Just like when, when you slap a baby on the ass, it starts breathing. Your body that gets easy. To get there. Yeah. So, so Gina, this can be done much easier with real eggs and not Cadbury eggs. Probably, yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm just guessing. I'm not a nutritionist. Folks, um, if you are stuck trying to figure out how to raise a stepchild, you do not have to worry anymore. <laughs> Go get the book, My Extra Mom by Gina Grad. And uh, you will learn stuff that I wish I had had when I was an extra dad. I'm still an extra dad. Girl just called me the other day and thanked me for this beautiful birthday gift I gave her. And then when I hung up, I asked, asked her mom, what did I give her? <laughs> Don't you love that? <laughs> yeah. And she showed it to me. And then I looked it up and saw the price. And I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was really nice of me. I'm dad of the year. Yeah. Please yeah. tell me you didn't buy her another horse. Oh, God, no. I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> She's up in New York. That would cost a million dollars a year. Oh, God. It would be cheaper if I bought her a Maserati. <laughs> um, no, we bought her some kind of thing. I don't know. I'll tell you about okay. it. Okay. It's fine. Um, but, yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was nice. Oh, that's funny. And that's the thing. You, you've been an extra parent for a long time. I am yeah. one and some, and I stumbled my way through it and I wrote this. So you, you listening don't have to do that. Stumbling your way through it is a good way to put it, Gina. Yeah. Because that's exactly what I did. And yeah, I really, this is like an owner's manual for yeah. being a step parent. Um, but it, it's, it's to be read to kids. So it's simple on their level and it's more nuanced on the, on the adults level. Yeah. And there's a little kid story at the beginning and it's like, Oh, this is kind of cute. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. But when I got to those questions in the back, I thought yeah. I would just read like one of the list. The lists are like 10, 12 deep. Most of them. And I'm going to be interviewing Gina on this. Let me just read one of the lists. Mm -hmm. And I read the list. And went, oh, that's interesting. And I turned the page and it's like, Oh, let me just read this one. <laughs> 15 minutes later, I was just reading them all. Yeah. You I'm know? so glad to hear that. It's basically activities and questions and fun conversation starters for, for the family. Yeah. Serena read it too. You know, we, we, we're big fans. Thank you. So, um, Folks, go check that out. You can go to VinnyTotteries.com, click through the banner, puts a little coal on the fire, gets my train down the track, and Gina's book is there front and center. Also, um, we have, um, at, oh, at um, NSNG Foods right now, uh, you can save uh, just what's known as a metric ton of money. By uh, putting in promo code Vinny. This is only for the month of March 2023. Let me explain something to you, folks. Don't come to me on April 1st and go, oh, I meant to, or I got to. Can you just make the code? Just give me the code. I'm a big fan. No, I'm sorry. I can't help you. It would be uh, disingenuous and wrong to everyone else who did it in time. You know, you're not special mm. to me. <laughs> you're not. So get off your ass and go put that promo code in and get all the extra ultra fat you want. There you have it. All right. Now, yeah. um, we have the super fan page. We also have the nickel and diamond UPDF. You can find all that at VinnyTotteries.com. We actually call it the NSNG ebook. Uh, millions of people have lost trillions of pounds. That's all I'm going to say on that. Uh, let me turn this off because the kids um, over on the iPad, or what do you call it? The pod? YouTube? Yes. Yeah, YouTube doesn't get to have all the fun. That's so if right. you guys want to hear the Neville's Yellow Moon, <laughs> you're going to have to go check out the podcast over <laughs> Stitcher or iTunes or somewhere mm -hmm. else. 